Okay, guys. So we are going to start flat on our back. And we're going to work through our single leg lifts to begin with. So we're going to start and maintain that neutral spine and that neutral pelvic position. So pubic bone, hip bones are all in the same alignment. We're going to reach our arms nice and long down by our side. You can always add a wedge to underneath the small of your back if you need that little um, wedge to help keep you from adding extra lumbar flexion to your position. You can also add a wedge underneath the hips. If you feel like you get into this movement, it starts to really pull on the hip flexors or pull on the low back. We're going to bring our right leg up to tabletop position, draw the abdominals deep into the body towards the spine, and we're going to inhale to lower the leg by hinging at the hip, lightly touching the mat with the foot, and then right back up on that exhale. You can scale the movement by making shorter ranges. So you could work up here, smaller position. You could also extend the leg a little bit more so there's not such a drastic knee bend. And remember, this movement is all about moving the leg in the hip itself. So we're maintaining that stable position in the knee and in the ankle, as well as in the low back, and just allowing the leg to move in the hip itself. One more on this right side, and then placing the foot down, and we'll switch to the other leg. I'm going to bring that leg up. Again, finding that position that's comfortable for the knee, comfortable for the hip as well. And then with that nice low inhale, we're going to lower by hinging at the hip, moving the thigh away from the chest, and then exhale back up. was harder or more challenging in some way, feel free to switch back to that other side so you can get in a few more repetitions unless it's this side that has maybe just a little bit more weakness or some type of imbalance that's making it feel a little bit different or less stable. We're going to go for our last three. Bringing both knees to tabletop, we'll draw through our inner thigh. You could always add a wedge between the knees or your Pilates ring. We're going to work into our spine twist supines. We're going to draw the ribs down, draw navel to spine, pull through inner thigh. And then on that inhale, we're going to tip the legs onto the right hip, lifting the left hip, but not the left shoulder blade. And then exhale back to center. Rocking over to that left hip by lifting the right. We exhale back to center. I'm using the base of my shoulder blades as my foundation. So I'm focusing right across the mid ribs, just there at the bra line. The base of the shoulder blade, that really helps me to keep the rib cage connected in and down. Allowing that rotation to happen through the mid back at the thoracic. So I'm not twisting in my low back or shifting my pelvis out of, out of position. My whole lower half from mid ribs down is moving as one solid connected unit. Last one each side. Bring the feet back down to the mat. We'll bring our arms nice and long down by our side. Our heels are lined up with our sit bones, not too close to your hips. You want to not crunch the knee or over bend the knee. We're going to work into our bridge and we're not going to curl just yet. So we're going to maintain again this neutral position. We'll lower the rib cage, 
Really, again, focus on the base of the shoulder blades, the mid ribs, and the chest dropping against the mat. Don't worry so much about the muscles in the shoulder, the rotator cuff touching the mat. And on the exhale, we're going to activate hamstrings, glutes, and core to lift the hips up. Press the knees forward towards the toes. Pause for a breath or two. And then bring the hips right back down. So we're connecting the sit bones, connecting the pockets back to the mat. And working on that focus of the shoulder blade, mid shoulder blade to the bottom of the shoulder blade, connecting to the mat. If you focus too much on the top of the shoulder, you're going to end up arching the upper back if you're trying to get more of the upper traps down to the floor. And if you're extra tight in your pecs, it's really going to overextend the back. Keep the arms and shoulders reaching long towards the hips and heels. For our last three, we're going to bring our arms straight up over the chest, palms facing each other. Really pull those shoulders down and back. Collarbone is spreading wide, neck is long, and we exhale to lift. Again, that attention is drawn to the lower half of the shoulder blade, pressing against the mat. Draw through inner thigh. And last one. Fingers interlace. We bring our hands back behind the head to support the head and the neck. Slight fold of the elbows forward in towards the face as you sink the rib cage in, long through the sacrum and the tailbone. We're going to keep that little gap at the low back and exhale to fold along the mid ribs, lifting the chest up. We pause for a breath at the top for this chest lift. And on the next exhale, without arching the back or flaring the ribs, we slowly lower back to the mat. into our rotation. Exhale to fold, gliding the shoulders down, bringing the chest forward and up off of the mat. Connect the hips to the floor and then on your next exhale we're going to tip over to that right shoulder blade. Inhale through to center. Exhale to twist. You can still keep that block between the knees or your Pilates ring between the knees to activate the adductors or the inner thighs a little bit more. And we're rotating from shoulder blade to shoulder blade. Sometimes adding a prop between the knees and the inner thigh, like a rolled up towel, something that you can squeeze against, will also help to stabilize the legs, stabilize the hips, keep your low back in neutral, and allow you to connect deeper to those lower segments of abdominal muscles. Last one, right and left. Coming to center, and then slow to reset. 
back to the mat. Arms will come long down at our side. We'll bring our knees to tabletop. Draw back. So you're pulling up slightly from the pubic bone, connecting all segments of the abdominal wall up and then drawing in towards the spine. Separate the legs just a little bit. If you're using a prop between the knees, you'll want to put that aside for the time being for leg changes. Inhale, right leg lowers towards the mat, hinging at the hip, and we exhale to change. Again, you can scale the position, scale the movement of the leg so you're not moving so far towards the floor. You could work smaller movements up towards the top. You could also add a straighter leg too if the knee bend is too much. And working these smaller movements up here. Connect again, base of the shoulder blade down against the mat. Draw the rib cage in. Draw navel to spine. Trying not to shift the hips out of position as the legs move. Reducing that torque on the pelvis. Three, two, and last set. Placing the feet back to the mat with knees bent, reaching the arms nice and long to reset the shoulders and the ribs first. And then we'll bring our arms up over the chest. You could go overhead if you'd like, just make sure the back doesn't lift, the ribs don't flare. And on the exhale, we're going to fold along the mid ribs, arms lower, chest lifts for our hundreds prep position, and inhale to reset. You could do this with just the arms alone, not adding the chest lift if you're concerned about flexion in the back or you're concerned about your neck. You could also interlace the hands back behind the head to support the head and the neck for these lifts. Last two. We'll bring our arms out to a T position, palms up towards the ceiling. Again, connecting the bottom of the shoulder blades. Be mindful that your arms are not too high up so you can keep the shoulders connected down and in. Knees to tabletop. We're going to extend the legs, straighten them towards the ceiling. You can either point the toes or flex at the ankle, whichever you prefer. And we're going to tip from side to side. Inhale, taking the legs, the hips, the low back as one unit to the right. And exhale back to center. Inhale to tip left. And exhale back. Drawing deeper into the abdominals. You can once again, if you'd like, add your Pilates ring between the ankles or a rolled up towel or yoga block between the ankles to press against. Last two to each side. Bending the knees, drawing the knees in towards the chest, stretching out the back, relaxing the abdominals, and sliding those shoulders down the back. Bring our arms out to a T position. The left leg is going to lengthen long across the mat. We're going to extend that right leg up, 
and we're going to go for circles. We're going to start either clockwise or clock counterclockwise, whichever you prefer. I'm going to take my right leg across my midline, across that left leg. It's going to come down, rotate out, and back up. Nice and smooth and slow. Your circles can be small or large depending on how well you're able to stabilize the back and the hip. And one more this direction. And we'll change. Reset, re-anchor to your mat, and then change your circle direction. Keeping the left hip anchored against the mat. And drawing the right knee in towards the chest. And then cross body towards that left shoulder to stretch out the right hip. Right leg extends long across the mat, down towards the end of the mat, bringing the left knee to tabletop. Connect the mid ribs, the shoulder blades against the mat, as well as your hips. And then extend that left leg, either pointed toe, or you could also flex at the ankle if that's more comfortable. And we're going to pick a circle direction. We'll do both. So your choice. I'm going to start by going across my right side, coming down, back up and around. Again, your circle could be very small to maintain that stability in the low back keeping the hip from tipping from side to side. And we'll pause, re-engage, reset, and change our circle direction. Last one, and drawing the knee in towards the chest, reaching that right leg long, and left knee comes cross body over towards that right shoulder to stretch out the outside of the left hip. Bringing our knees to tabletop position. Drawing through the inner thigh, you could add a prop between the knees. The legs are gonna stay stationary in tabletop. Bringing the arms either up over the chest or overhead near the ears. We're gonna go back into our chest lifts, moving into that next part of the hundreds progression. Exhale, arms lower, chest lift. And inhale to reset. Folding along the mid ribs, along the bra line, drawing the abdominals in. And two more. Feet will come back to the mat. Arms are going to be nice and long down by our side. We're going to work our pelvic tilt now. Reconnect those shoulder blades down towards your back pockets. We're starting with that little gap between the low back. Again, you could add a wedge or keep your wedge between the knees or your Pilates ring. 
And exhale, we're going to tilt the hips back, imprint the low back against the mat, drawing the abdominals deep in towards the spine, and articulate back to a neutral spine. Exhale to tilt. Working that C curve through the lower half of the back, Rolling along the different segments of the spine from tailbone up the sacrum through the low back to imprint and get hollow through the core. And last two. On our next repetition, we're going to work into our pelvic curl. So we're going to articulate the spine work into our pelvic curl bridge. On the exhale, we tilt the hips back. Again, imprint the low back and begin to scoop, lifting the hips, lifting the spine, segment by segment, vertebra by vertebra, all the way up to the top of that bridge as the ribs knit down and in. Pull through the inner thighs, draw the core to your center. And on your next exhale, leading with the rib cage first, keep the hips as high as you can until the very last moment we begin to articulate and curl down. Once again, keeping your focus and your attention to the lower half of the shoulder blade, connecting that to the mat. Don't worry about the very top of your shoulder pressing against the floor. You want to feel that shoulder connection against the mat, especially through the rhomboids right between the shoulder blades. If articulating the spine is contraindicated, you can always go back to that neutral spine shoulder bridge that we worked at the first half of the session. Reset the shoulders, lengthen through the neck and the collarbone. And last one. Bringing the arms back out to a T position, palms up towards the ceiling. Again, working a little lower T position to keep the shoulders connected in and down. Knees come to tabletop. We're going to straighten the legs. Point the toes or flex at the ankle, whichever you prefer. We're going to go in for corkscrew. On my inhale, I take my legs, my hips, my low back as one unit to the right. Inhale down. Sweep across and then exhale up that left side, cut across to center and a reverse direction over to that left. Inhale down, exhale, sweep up and across. Using your shoulder girdle as your foundation, draw navel to spine, you can always add a little knee bend too. If your hamstrings are very tight, having this, more, having this knee bent will relax them just a little bit so they're not so stretched and you can still work those clockwise counterclockwise circles. Last one going left. 
Then draw the knees in towards the chest, drop the heels towards the hips, and stretch. Stretching through the low back, long through the neck, shoulders down, collarbone is wide. We'll go into our butterfly stretch along the sides of the feet, the soles of the feet pressing together to rest on the mat. Knees fall out to the side to open and stretch through hip flexors and inner thigh. Bring the legs back to neutral in that knee bend. We're going to come up to our tabletop position, going into our next movement of our hundreds progression. If you liked using a block between the knees, I would add it here between or just above the ankle bone for um, the best position when we start straightening the legs. Arms come up over the chest or overhead. And on our exhale, the arms are going to lower, the chest is going to lift, and the legs will extend forward. And inhale to reset. Again, you could do this with just the arms and the legs, not adding the chest lift. Or interlace hands behind the head to support the head and the neck. Last two. Placing the feet down to the mat, bring the lower half of the right leg across the top of the left, working into that gentleman's stretch, that figure four stretch. We'll bring our left leg up to tabletop, reach through the opening, grabbing the back of the left leg and twisting that right knee away from the shoulder. Placing the right foot flat on the mat, we'll bring the lower half of the left leg across the top of the right thigh Twisting that left knee away from the shoulder. Picking the right leg up in the tabletop, reaching through, grabbing the back of the right leg. And drawing that left knee away from the shoulder. Twisting the leg in the hip. Keeping the core active and engaged so the hips don't try to slide away or laterally flex to the side. You don't want to lose the alignment of the hips to the ribs and the shoulders. Last one. And we'll unwind. Placing the feet flat on the mat, bend at the knee. We're going to bring our arms back and long at our side and we'll bring our right knee to tabletop position. We're going to work into our single leg bridge. We're going to keep our neutral spine, anchor into the mid back, and exhale to bridge and lift. Slow to lower. Hips touch the mat, and exhale to lift. One more on this side. And we'll reset, bringing the right foot back to the mat, just in line with your sit bone. We'll float our left leg to tabletop position. 
and on our exhale, we'll lift. Slow to lower. Last two. Both knees will come to tabletop. Arms are going to come up over the chest, palms facing towards your feet. And we're going to add a leg opening into this hundreds progression. On the exhale, the arms lower, the chest lifts, the legs slide forward, legs open, close. Inhale to reset. Draw knees in towards the chest. We'll bring our feet down to the mat. Arms go out to a T. We'll drop the legs over to the right side. We'll stretch and a rotation through the back. Look out over that left arm. Bringing the feet and the legs back to center, dropping the legs over to the left side and looking out over that right arm. Coming back to center. Arms are going to come long down by your side. We're going to bring our right leg to tabletop, straighten and extend that right leg. And we're going to lower for single leg lift, straight leg. Inhale to lower. Flex at the ankle, draw the top of the foot back towards the shin to stretch the calf. And exhale to lift. Pointing the toes, you slow to lower. And exhale to lift. You could transfer your hands to your hips if you'd like to feel the feedback to make sure the hips are staying stable and not shifting or moving out of position as the leg glides through the movement. Bending the right knee, placing the foot flat to the mat. Just in line with the sit bone, check the alignment. And then left knee to tabletop. Straighten and lengthen that left leg towards the ceiling. And we're gonna inhale to lower, flex at the ankle, and exhale up. that left knee and placing the foot flat to the mat. We'll bring our knees to tabletop position. Arms are going to come back up over the chest, palms facing your feet. We're going to work into our final leg of the hundreds progression. 
for our hold position. On the exhale, arms lower, chest lifts, legs extend. You could keep them in tabletop. And we're gonna pump the arms at the shoulder. Drawing the abdominals deeper in, squeeze through inner thigh. You could have a block between the ankles to activate the adductors or that Pilates ring. You could also have small weights in the hands. There's plenty of things that you could add, props, to activate more muscle groups or deeper that abdominal connection. Last 10 pulses. Pulling the knees into the chest, dropping the shoulders and the head back to the mat, lengthen the spine towards the end of the mat, slide shoulders back and down, the collarbone spreading wide. And we'll circle the knees from the hip. Rotate the knees out towards that right shoulder, Move them away over to that left side and across and reverse direction. Similar to that corkscrew movement, but more in this kind of stretching. Drawing the knees in for one final stretch as you lengthen the sacrum and the tailbone towards the end of the mat. We'll bring our legs nice and long, working into our roll up. Toes are pointed, pulling in through inner thighs, arms come overhead, dropping the rib cage and anchoring into the base of the shoulders. On the inhale, arms wide forward, chin to chest as you lift the head and neck and exhale to curl, drawing the abdominals to the spine, curling and rounding up, segment by segment, vertebra by vertebra, into that nice C curve, shoulders over hips, keeping that rounded spine. On the next exhale, we sink back into that C curve, deeper as we tilt the hips back, gliding the shoulders down, Pulling navel to spine, start to articulate up the sacrum and then segment by segment up the low back, mid back to the shoulder girdle and arms glide overhead without the back arching or the rib cage flaring. Inhale once again as the arms glide forward, chin to chest as you lift the head and the neck and exhale to tuck, drawing the abdominals up under the rib cage, pulling abs to spine as deep as you can Shoulder over hip, gliding the shoulders down, lengthen through the neck, find that extension, that length, and exhale to tilt back. Imprinting segment by segment, keeping the feet and the legs connected to the floor, rolling back as far as you can without the legs lifting. Flexing at the ankle, rolling forward over the legs to stretch. Reaching for the toes if you can, otherwise hands to shins or even to knees, rounding long over the legs. Taking the feet and the legs mat width apart. Flexing at the ankle, drawing the top of the foot back. We want to sit nice and tall and long up out of the sit bones. Arms are going to come out to the side. Palms rotate up. Externally rotate the arm and the shoulder. And we're going to rotate through the mid ribs, rotating to the right for a double pulse. One, two, without moving in the hips. 
Rotate through the mid ribs to the left for a double pulse. One, two. Arms are spread wide. The arms aren't shifting out of position. We're just rotating through the mid back. Keeping the legs nice and still. Hips and legs are pointing forward. And last rotation left. Coming forward, arms reach long out in front, chin to chest, and roll forward, rolling down, forward stretch through the legs. Hands to feet or shins, dropping those shoulders down, and begin to lift the head, neck, and chest into that flat back thoracic extension. Rounding through the spine and restack from tailbone up. Stacking longer and taller, stretching the spine towards the ceiling. And arms come out to our T, palms face forward. We're going to rotate right. Left arm reaches for that right foot as the right arm reaches long behind you. Stretch over that leg, up on that diagonal, unwind, and we switch sides. Anchoring the opposite hip. Working just a modified saw exercise for more of that rotation and stretch. Last one, reaching for that left foot, anchoring that right hip, coming back to center, arms reach out in front, chin to chest, rolling forward, rolling down, segment by segment, vertebra by vertebra, reaching for the shins or the feet, drawing the toes back and the top of the foot back towards the shin and knee, and begin to lift and flatten the back. Chest lifts. One more breath. Drop back into that rounded spine. Hands release. Tuck and curl. Restack the spine, segment by segment, vertebra by vertebra. Bringing the legs to the center, we're going to bend the knees, place the feet flat. You're going to sit back a little bit more on your pocket, so less on your tailbone, less on your safe, less on your sit bones, excuse me. And we're going to bring that right leg up to tabletop. Hinging back just slightly, you can hold on to that left leg with your left hand if you'd like. Right arm reaches forward, and we're going to inhale to straighten that right leg, and exhale to draw it back. Dropping the shoulders down, long through the spine. Three, two, one. Resetting, right foot to the mat. You're hinged back slightly, grab the back of the right leg with the right hand, left leg to tabletop. Restack the spine. Inhale to extend and exhale to bend. Last three. Sitting back on your pockets, bring both legs to tabletop, holding on to the back of the legs. Long through the spine. 
lengthen through the neck, drop the shoulders, collarbone is spreading wide, balancing on the hips, start to release your grip, and float. shoulders down, lengthen and extend the back, and one more, slowly start to release the grip, tighten in through the ribs and the abdominals, arms off the legs if you can, and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands to the back of the thighs, feet to the mat, butterfly position, soles of the feet together, sitting up nice and tall, hinging forward for that stretch, and rounding the spine, rounding forward over the feet and legs, pressing the knees and the legs towards the floor, and restack the spine. Sitting up nice and tall, nice and long, lengthen through the spine, chest lifts for the ceiling. And straightening the back. All right guys, great work today.